Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Cole Brings Plenty, a promising actor known for his roles in 1923 and other television series, tragically passed away at the age of 27. Found in a wooded area in Kansas on Friday, after being reported missing since the early morning hours of March 31st, his untimely death has left family, friends, and fans in mourning. Cole, who had ventured into acting with appearances in Into the Wild Frontier and The Tall Tales of Jim Bridger, was making strides in the industry, showcasing his talent and passion for storytelling. His role in 1923, a prequel to the popular Yellowstone series, highlighted his promising future and the depth he brought to his characters. The circumstances surrounding his disappearance and the subsequent police investigation into allegations of domestic violence add a layer of complexity to his passing. Despite this, his father, Joe Brings Plenty Sr., reflected on the love and support the family received during the search for Cole, emphasizing the goodness in his heart and the impact he had on those who knew him. Cole's absence will be profoundly felt by those who had the pleasure of knowing him and by fans who had just begun to appreciate his work. As his family and the creative community come to terms with this loss, they will hold on to the memories of his spirit, his contributions to the arts, and the promise of what could have been. In remembering Cole Brings Plenty, we reflect on a life that, though brief, was filled with the pursuit of artistic expression and an enduring impact on those who shared in his journey. Tribute to Cole Brings Plenty Adrian Schiller, a distinguished actor recognized for his versatile roles in television and theater, has passed away suddenly at the age of 60. Schiller, whose career spanned three decades, was best known for playing the crafty Eeldorman Ethelhelm in Netflix's historical drama The Last Kingdom and the devoted steward Cornelius Penge in ITV's Victoria. His representative acknowledged his untimely death, expressing grief and noting that it occurred way too soon. At the time of his death, he was active in the theater world, having recently finished the Australian portion of the Lehman Trilogy Tour. He was looking forward to the next stop on this international trip, which was San Francisco. Tributes have come in from a variety of sources, including Rufus Norris, the National Theater's outgoing director. Norris described Schiller as a wonderful actor whose talents spanned his whole career, citing his superb recent performance in the Lehman Trilogy as particularly memorable. Norris commented on his important presence in the theater community and how much he will be missed. His acting abilities were not limited to the theater, he appeared in several well-received television shows. Among these were his roles as Pasha Verdinikov in Death in Paradise, the BBC series The Musketeers, and Channel 4's The Devils. His final film performance was in Father Brown, where he played a criminal involved in a heist. Aside from his renowned parts in Victoria and The Last Kingdom, Schiller's contributions to the theater included performances in Every Good Boy Deserves Favor, The Veil, the captain of Kopenick, and Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme, demonstrating his diverse talent and passion to his craft. His abrupt departure has left a gap in the acting profession, with both colleagues and admirers lamenting the loss of a talent gone too soon. His legacy, which includes a vast repertoire of diverse and impactful performances, will continue to inspire and be honored. Jean-Paul Vignon, the enchanting French vocalist and actor whose talents captivated audiences for nearly eight decades, passed away due to liver cancer in Beverly Hills. He was 89 years old. His soft voice and elegant manner made him a symbol of romance and charm as he seamlessly transitioned between the realms of music and acting, establishing a legacy that crosses continents and generations. Vignon initially gained recognition in the United States in 1963, 
when he made his debut at the Blue Angel, a famed New York supper club, opening for none other than Woody Allen. This performance opened the way for his subsequent appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show, where he not only demonstrated his musical abilities, but also shared the stage with Liza Minnelli. His charm and talent led to regular appearances on the Johnny Carson and Merv Griffin shows, cementing his place in American entertainment. His album, Because I Love You, published in 1964 by Columbia Records, included a mix of modern pop and American standards that showcased his vocal versatility. His acting career was similarly strong, with roles in major films such as The Devil's Brigade, in which he co-starred with William Holden and Cliff Robertson. In 1994, the Los Angeles Times described him as the epitome of the romantic, singing Frenchman, a role he relished with a voice that was both passionate and sensitive. Despite shifting audience tastes and the unavoidable changes in the entertainment industry, Vignon kept a constant presence in the cabaret scene. He had a rebirth in the 1990s, fueled by a resurgent interest in pop vocalists and the success of the album Unforgettable, which featured Natalie and Nat King Cole. His performances lasted far into his 80s, including appearances at Feinstein's Vitello's and the Catalina Jazz Club. His career also included appearances on television shows like The Rockford Files, Falcon Crest, and Gilmore Girls. He voiced one of the Merry Men in Shrek and narrated the romantic comedy 500 Days of Summer. His production business, Cote d'Azur Productions, exposed French audiences to dubbed versions of American films such as Scarface. Lynn Loring, a trailblazer who seamlessly transitioned from a child actress on Search for Tomorrow to one of Hollywood's highest-ranking female executives, passed away at Providence Cedars Sinai Tarzana Medical Center due to chronic illnesses. She was 80. Her career in the entertainment sector demonstrates her adaptability and pioneering zeal. Loring demonstrated her acting abilities in a variety of genres, from her early days on Search for Tomorrow to her impactful appearances in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis and the FBI. Not satisfied with just being in front of the camera, she reinvented herself as a producer and executive, joining Aaron Spelling Productions and leaving an indelible mark on projects like Mr. Mom and pioneering the successful transition of In the Heat of the Night from film to television series. She broke glass barriers as head of MGM Television, becoming one of the industry's few female executives at the time. Her personal life was just as vibrant as her professional one. She momentarily left acting to focus on her family after marrying actor Roy Thins, but returned with a revitalized vision that saw her make important contributions behind the scenes. Her work ethic and ambition to break down obstacles helped her become a renowned figure in Hollywood, campaigning for women's representation in senior positions. Lynn Loring is survived by her children, including her daughter Casey Lee, and is remembered by family and colleagues for her contributions to television and movies. Her legacy is one of a lady who never shied away from adapting and taking on new challenges. Her rise from child star to top executive exemplifies an incredible journey of tenacity, inventiveness, and leadership in the entertainment industry. Ron Harper, a versatile actor whose career spanned over five decades, passed away at the age of 91 due to natural causes at his home in West Hills. His incredible career through television and movies left a lasting mark on fans and the entertainment business. Harper was born on January 12, 1933, in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. He graduated from Turtle Creek High School and received a scholarship to Princeton University, where he pursued his passion for acting. Despite being offered a fellowship at Harvard Law School, Harper chose to follow his dream of acting, which resulted in a successful and versatile career. His early career was defined by his appearance as an understudy for Paul Newman in Tennessee Williams' Sweet Bird of Youth, directed by Aaliyah Kazan. This opportunity led to parts on television shows like Tales of Wells Fargo, Thriller, Wagon Train, and The Tall Man. Harper is arguably most recognized for his starring parts in Planet of the Apes and Land of the Lost. In Planet of the Apes, he played astronaut Alan Verdon, adding to the series that followed the popularity of the legendary film franchise. Despite its exorbitant production expenses and eventual cancellation after only 14 episodes, Harper's performance had an impact on sci-fi television. 
Harper appeared in the third and final season of Land of the Lost, as Uncle Jack to a family stuck in an alternate dimension. His work on the series reinforced his reputation as a cherished figure among science fiction aficionados, and the show is still popular in reruns. His career also includes performances on 87th Precinct, Wendy and Me, The Gene Arthur Show, and Garrison's Gorillas, which demonstrated his versatility as an actor. Aside from television, Harper returned to Broadway and performed in films such as The Wild Season, The Odd Couple 2, and Pearl Harbor, as well as guest starring on various TV shows. Ron Harper is survived by his daughter Nicole Longway, son-in-law Daniel, and granddaughters Ronnie and Harper. He leaves behind a legacy of remarkable performances and a passion for his work that inspired many. His journey from a bright law student to a recognized actor exemplifies the importance of following one's passion, a lesson that will live on in the hearts of all who knew him and appreciated his work. Barbara Baldwin, a notable figure in the realm of television, known for her memorable roles and significant contributions behind the scenes, has passed away at the age of 85. Baldwin died of congestive heart failure in her Manhattan Beach home, leaving a legacy that included famous series and significant moments in television history. Born in Quincy, Massachusetts, she began her acting career at El Camino College in Torrance, California, and continued her education at the famed Lee Strasberg Institute. Her talent drove her into the spotlight, earning her a place in the hearts of both spectators and industry insiders. Her early success came from her part as Angela Martin, a phaser control officer on the renowned television series, Star Trek. Her performance, notably in two episodes of the first season where her character's wedding is significantly disrupted by a Romulan attack, demonstrated her ability to inject depth and emotion into the sci-fi genre. She then returned to the series finale, Turnabout Intruder, as Lieutenant Lisa, a communications officer, confirming her place in the Star Trek heritage. Her acting abilities were not restricted to the final frontier. She also contributed significantly to the medical drama Medical Center, where she portrayed Nurse Holmby in 51 episodes. Her character's repeated appearance gave a degree of continuity and relatability to the drama, which increased its narrative depth. As her career evolved, she moved behind the camera, bringing her sharp eye for talent to the casting departments of several well-known shows, including Dynasty, Matt Houston, and Trapper John Maryland. Her casting work helped shape the landscape of 1980s television by introducing fans to new faces and interesting personalities. Aside from her professional accomplishments, her personal relationships, particularly her friendship with Dawn Wells of Gilligan's Island, demonstrated her warmth and camaraderie in the industry. She is survived by her son, Mark D'Agosta, another son, Joseph, and grandchildren, Cassandra and Justine, all of whom carry on her passion for the arts and contributions to the entertainment industry. Robin Bernard, renowned for her role as Terry Brock on the ABC soap opera, General Hospital, during the 1980s, has passed away at the age of 64. Her unexpected demise has left fans and colleagues lamenting the loss of a beloved daytime television personality. The circumstances surrounding her passing were reported as unexpected, with her body recovered in a field behind a business in San Jacinto, California, sparking ongoing investigations by the Riverside County Sheriff's Office. Her acting career began with her breakthrough part in Diva, but it wasn't until she earned the important role of Terry Brock on General Hospital that she captured the hearts of audiences. She portrayed the daughter of David Groh's wicked character D.L. Brock in several episodes, demonstrating her range and depth as an actress and becoming a household name among soap opera viewers. In addition to General Hospital, she has been on Simon & Simon, Whiz Kids, The Facts of Life, and Tour of Duty. Her filmography includes roles in films such as Betty Blue, Rosalind and the Lions, and Kings for a Day. Her final on-screen performance was in Voices from the High School, when she played a psychologist. She was born in Gladewater, Texas, and is the older sister of Crystal Bernard, who starred in Wings. Robin Bernard's contributions to television and movies have made a lasting impression on the industry. 
As the entertainment industry and fans reflect on her career, Bernard will be remembered for the joy and artistry she brought to the screen, leaving a legacy of remarkable performances that continue to captivate audiences around the world. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Anna Paquin, acclaimed for her role in The Piano, showed remarkable courage as she attended the premiere of A Bit of Light, directed by her husband Stephen Moyer, with the aid of a cane due to ongoing health issues. The 41-year-old actress, facing undisclosed health challenges affecting her mobility and speech, walked the red carpet in New York City, demonstrating resilience and determination. Despite her struggles, Pakan expressed gratitude for the support of her husband and the opportunity to continue her passion for independent filmmaking. A Bit of Light, featuring Pakan as an alcoholic mother fighting for her family, highlights her talent and commitment to storytelling with integrity. News 2. United States Congresswoman Lauren Boebert has courageously faced a medical challenge, being diagnosed with May Thurner syndrome, an uncommon vascular condition, following a serious blood clot in her leg. Hospitalized for severe leg swelling, Boebert's condition was swiftly addressed with surgery at Ute Health Medical Center of the Rockies. The procedure involved removing the clot and inserting a stent, with a full recovery expected. Bobert's ordeal shines a spotlight on May Thurner syndrome, a condition where pelvic arteries compress veins, leading to potential blood clots. This rare diagnosis and Bobert's proactive treatment highlight the importance of awareness and prompt medical intervention for vascular abnormalities.